All right, so basically the most important element to this type B is really just like the sample. You just gotta pick the right sample in order for it to hit because it's mainly like the whole basis of this type of beat. So a lot of these samples are kind of like indie, alternative, like rock. I found a really good place to start for me is um, this indie rock playlist, Blalock's indie rock playlist. So it dates all the way back to like 2009. Essentially, this is where I start out my love for music. These are just like playlists that come out like once a month, like every month since 2009 basically and yeah it was just really great underground kind of like unsigned indie music so essentially i went back and i found a good sample to use which ended up being go do by john c so essentially what you want to do is pick your sample so this is the probably the most difficult and tedious part of the process you want to pick your sample and then you want to find the tempo of this which can take a little bit of time but sometimes um what i like to do first if it's a bigger and more well-known song you can actually just google the song name, who it's by, and then just search key and BPM. TuneBat is a good option that comes up. There's a, there's usually a few options, um, and then they'll just tell you like what key it's in and how many beats per minute. So for this one, it was 140, and it was in E major. Sometimes I've found that they're like they might not be exact. They might be like the tempo might be out by like one or two, but it's a really good starting point and it can save you a lot of time. So I ended up dropping that into Ableton. So then the other way is to do it manually, and basically this is like the OG way. This is where like the original like form of sampling come from. You'd like sample vinyl. You have no idea what key or BPM it is. So you have to like go in there and essentially find a section of the song that is that's easy enough to flow along. So what I would start off by doing is it looks like this is where the drums come in. So I'd probably cut that section off and then I'll just kind of loop a section and run the metronome. You turn off warp, you just want to change the BPM until you find that it's matching the, me the timing of the metronome. So we already know that this is at 140 BPM and I've matched that. So you can kind of see like each of these like transients are like on the grid. So we'll run with 140 BPM. Just go with your ear, whatever sounds correct. And then another thing to note with non-computer music or like you know, bands, live bands or recorded drums. It's not always going to be like perfectly on the grid. So you really just have to use your ear and work with whatever sounds the best. This can be a little bit tedious, but I promise if you stick to it, it will be really rewarding in the end when you get to the point that you can like chop up the sample and start playing around with it. The first thing that I did, I listened back through this whole song and then I kind of found like a section, which I'm pretty sure the section that I sampled was like towards the end here. The part of the song that I found was actually quite good because it had like the hook in it. it had a whole lot of kind of like vocals and there was no like drums in it or anything like that so it was quite easy to sample sometimes when you're working with like drums obviously it gets a little bit cluttered makes it hard for you to layer your own stuff at the top but that being said you can always like eq out stuff to a certain extent i just kind of like worked the tracks in i ended up cutting it into like four bar sections and i just arranged it according to how it like sounded good <laughs> So then the next thing I did was I just um, EQ'd it out, actually run S RC20, just gave it a little bit of distortion. Once I had the sample, click warp, and then I bumped the BPM up to 145. I also pitched it up four semitones. The main reason for this being was just so that I could post it on YouTube and hopefully it doesn't get picked up by copyright or whatever. Then the next thing that I moved on to was the hi-hats. This is like obviously drill hats. So they're just triplet hi-hats and then I layered it with a snare. The one thing that drill snare patterns are different from just your regular rap beats is like normal rap beats will be like this. So it'll hit like right here and right here. With drill beats, the first hit comes in here and then the second one is like off beat a little bit. Next thing that I did was I just kind of had like some snare fills. I uh, just went with the spins 808. Towards the end of like the 808 pattern is where it kind of like, gets a little bit more intense. So you can like do some like pitch changes or like add some kind of like 808 rolls in there. I made like a B section for the drums. It was, I kind of took inspiration from Hillbillies. This one, when I listened back to Hillbillies, it was kind of more of like a Jersey type 
drum pattern. The 808 was just a little bit more intense in this section. And then I also laid it with this percussion that you hear in a lot of Gianni stuff, which was actually from the Taylor Morgan and Forever drum kit, which I really recommend. It's got really good drum sounds. <laughs> So yeah, that's the whole beat. I just wanted to keep this tutorial simple and short. Let me know what you guys think. Comment down below if you want me to like do another type tutorial or whatever. Yeah, I'd love to know what you guys want. Um, And this will obviously be up on my Patreon if you want to reference the drums and get the right pattern down. <laughs>